And all he can do is stand in life's statues And all he can do is stand in life's statues Don't turn a head to see me right by But a brown little Mary is waking her eyes What a beautiful morning What a beautiful Discovery, and a special good morning to Nicole. Nicole, that song was for you. Good morning, Mike, and a big hug and thanks to my family for that uh, music selection this morning, and a special thanks to our friend Davey Knowles for his rendition of that song. It's one of my favorites, and it is once again a beautiful morning here in space, and we are looking forward to EVA 1. This is Mission Control Houston. We're taking a live look inside the Quest airlock as Steve Bowen and Al Drew get ready to do this first spacewalk of the STS-133 mission. You can see Paulo Nespoli there on the left and Mike Barrett there on the right, uh, helping Bowen get uh, secured into his suit. The uh, hatches are still closed in, beside, uh, in between the Quest airlock there and the rest of the station. The pressure has been taken down to 10.2 PSI. After these guys get secured inside their spacesuits, that is when uh, they will. Uh, the rest of the crew will move them over into the crew lock portion of Quest, and then another hatch will be closed, and uh, we'll get close to the spacewalk getting started. Airlock Houston, Big Loop, back with you after the gimbal swap. Did you call us? And Airlock, yes, we did. Uh, is Mr. Copra in the room? He certainly is. And, uh, yes, okay, sir, Mike. Then we will proceed. Sounds good, Mike. I'm really looking forward to working with you guys. I'll be sitting side saddle with Stan and uh, helping out where I can. Great, Tim. It's great to hear your voice, and uh, it's a big comfort knowing you're down there and watching over us. And it's my pleasure. Thanks, Tim. Hey, good to hear your voice, Steve. <laughs> it should be the other way around, though. Well, you're a good man for the job. Good to hear you, too, Tim. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you outside for your first time. You're going to do great today. Good deal. All your good work coming to fruition here, Tim. The crew has opened the thermal cover on the Quest airlock hatch. Okay, hatch is open and stowed. Hey, copy. The hatch is open and stowed. And uh, stand by for the post deep breath. Nick, I think my first bag is the uh, get-ahead bag for Steve. That's correct, Al. First bag, get-ahead bag. Okay, Nicole, I have my large hook from my mini workstation to the forward D-ring, uh, gate closed and locked. And How about just one more check on the reel? Absolutely. Reels unlocked. You want the whole set again? Nope, absolutely not. Okay. Um, and with that, you are go to release your waist tether from the internal D ring. All right, that's in work. Steve Bowen already outside the Quest airlock. Al Drew still inside, uh, about to make his way outside for the first time. Al Drew slowly making his way outside of the Quest airlock for the first time. He is. Uh, getting his uh, first views of what it feels like to uh, do a real spacewalk outside the International Space Station. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close the thermal hatch. If he uh, takes a moment to look down below him, he'll see the northeastern coast of South America and uh, parts of the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, I'll get... The station, the shuttle heading up uh, toward the western edge of Africa and then up over parts of Spain and Europe. And yeah, I see good... Take each other rooting all the way back to the structure itself. You're good on that. And you check your paper handles and then check your handles for down. I see your right handles down. And just give me a twist to the left. I see your left handles also down. And I see you in a good configuration, Steve. Thank you, Al. And we agree, you're both looking great out there. And Al, take a little time for some translation adaptation, and Steve will hang at the airlock. Okay. Gonna do you like an airlock way out, uh, full way out type of thing here? Yeah? Do a couple of rotations each axis. 
We're going to be moving over to the J612 extension cable task. Right. Steve, you're going to translate directly there. You'll be leading out. And Al, you'll head over to uh, lap hand rail 237. 237, inward. Okay, Nicole, I'm on my way. All right, I've got the wire tie for the cable, the J612. And I'm ready to hand it over to Al. Okay, and I'm ready to receive it. Let me get it off of my BRT. I just... There it goes. All right. And I have it. You have it. Thank you, Al. All right, Nicole, I think this spot I'm done. I'm ready to proceed. And they come on the front face. Copy, Al. You're on your way to the seat of cart. That's correct. Station Houston, big loop with J612 complete and RPCM install complete. We are repowering Z14 Bravo. This is Mission Control Houston. 54 minutes and 27 seconds into today's spacewalk. They have wrapped up the first major task, the installation of this J612 backup power cable between uh, the Unity and Tranquility nodes. The crew will now move to uh, over to toward the uh, station robotic arm to get that set up. Okay. Bowen will be on the end of that arm for part of today's activities. I'd be happy to While he is setting up that arm, Al Drew is going to move over and get a uh, tool that will be used on this failed ammonia pump uh, later on during this mission to vent the remaining ammonia out of it. Okay, Nicole, I have the bag and I'm going around ESG2. Steve, we showed you stowing in the um, socket caddy when you get there on the adjustable tether. Okay, thank you. Transferring the street to one of my rats so I can pick it right off for another pump module and be ready as the pump module. This is a look at uh, Drew as he works around the area of the uh, CETA cart. It's a crew equipment translation aid cart. It's an area where uh, quite a bit of spacewalk equipment is located. So he's gathering some uh, spare parts and a uh, what is called a vent tool extension bag. And uh, he's going to be moving over to external stowage platform number two uh, here shortly. There's an up-close view of Steve Bowen as he uh, works toward the end of the station's robotic arm. And Steve, it'll be a clock at 12. All right. Just get it in there, get it set up. Steve Bowen is finishing up installing a uh, portable foot restraint on the end of the station's arm. That's what he will basically stand on uh, as he gets flown by Mike Barrett and Scott Kelly coming up here in just a few minutes. A major portion of this spacewalk today will be to retrieve that uh, failed ammonia pump uh, that uh, failed last summer. Doug Wheelock and Tracy Caldwell Dyson had to go outside and uh, swap it out with a uh, spare. And uh, this uh, bad pump has been sitting on the uh, a payload attachment point right there beside the uh, station's arm for some number of months. They're going to retrieve it and move it over to an external stowage platform uh, coming up today. Five-eighths clock is installed. Got 
Copy that, Steve. from uh, Al Drew's helmet cam. He's uh, moving around outside the station. You can see some of those uh, gap spanners there that the crew members use to move from one section to another. Hey, Steve, my gloves are clean. Okay, thanks. Station Discovery Houston on the big loop. Good news and kudos to both crews. The new RPCM is powered and healthy, and we see good power draw on the J612 cable. But good to hear, Stan. Discovery copy is great news. Steve Bowen there getting the view of a lifetime down at the Earth below in the entire International Space Station complex. Good out there. Just standing and stretching, you know you're gonna wake up at some time. Going through the rock room song in my head. That coffee ought to be kicking in any time now. If I decided an H T V and ATV are both dick. We'll pass that on. You probably see most everything from that vantage point, can't you? I did, I got a good view there for a while. I can see the top half now. Back behind Bowen in this view is Shuttle Discovery, which you can obviously see there. The nose of the orbiter down below him is a Japanese HTV cargo craft. You can also see the Columbus Laboratory there toward the right-hand side. for Robo, looking for a go for pump module maneuvers. Do you have that go? Copy, Stan, thanks. Okay, and Al, um, from what I could see, it looked good. Let me check with Houston. Okay. Houston, Discovery, EVA. Go ahead, Nicole. Yeah, Stan, how'd you like that, uh, the pointing of the nozzle? Um, should be able to see it in Al's WBS. Looks great. Uh, we're wondering if we could get a pull test just to make sure it's secure. Okay, copy that. Al Hodge, copy. We'll be momentarily, Nicole. Thanks. This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 47 minutes into today's spacewalk. As you can see, Al Drew has that vent tool uh, extension mounted there uh, close to the Destiny Laboratory. This will allow the uh, ground teams and the Expedition 26 crew to vent the remaining ammonia that is inside that failed pump. Uh, out over the coming days after it gets stowed over on external stowage platform number two. Station Houston on one for robotics. It looks like we've lost the cupola workstation due to a comm dropout with the CNC MDM. We're working it. We'll get you more words as soon as we can. Okay, we'll stand by for now. Mike, it'll take us about 30 minutes to recover the cupola RWS. Uh, we can get the lab active in one command, but you'll have to move shop. Which option do you like? For today, uh, we're not that dependent on direct views, so uh, let's go ahead and move shop. Copy, we'll get it in work. As are we, thanks, sir. Keep it about four feet out. Thank you, Al.
around just a little bit. And maybe go out a little bit to your left. Start into the MLI. Go a little bit more to the left. There you go, you got it. Coming aft. Okay, you're coming up on the guide here, you're about a few inches up. To your left, can you the guide? Can you ask? I see both pins in the guide. I see both pins in the guide. Okay. Can you ask? Hang on a sec. That, yep. Okay, that's the other one that's in there. Okay. Continue aft by another six inches. I agree. Continue aft. Again, continuing aft and uh, slowing her down. Okay. All right. I see both pins in the guide now. Okay. I concur. That's three inches. And you can stop motion. Stop motion. And the gout. Okay. Okay, count tests are complete on the EGT. Ready for settings. All right, Al. Alpha 2, counterclockwise 2. All right, you're going to release the ATB bolt two to four turns. That's in work, Nicole. That's complete, man. Okay, Al, you can now move over to uh, pull the key handle out to the unlock position, and you should see two white lines visible once okay. you do that. All right. Now, give that man a shake, would you? Up, huh? at the, up at the handle, give it a shake. Give it a shake, the red. This one here? Okay, yeah, that's very good. Thanks. Thanks. That's a good catch. That'll okay. go. That's a good this is Al Drew's helmet cam. His is the one that has a 20 at the bottom right-hand side. Steve Bowens is the one that has a 19 at the bottom right-hand side, which you see there. There's a series of bolts that the two astronauts have to uh, drive down to get this uh, failed ammonia pump module uh, secured back into its uh, thermal cover there on that stowage platform. And then you're going to rotate that guy down to temp still. There you go. Okay. In this view, you can see Steve Bowen there on the left. He's the one that is uh, standing on the stationed robotic arm. He's the one that's got the red stripes on his pants. Al Drew is what they call the free floater. He's back there at the uh, top left-hand portion of your screen. And I've also picked up my ratchet wrench with palm wheel. Excellent. Thank you very much. And you'll be going down to the FHRC next. Yeah, I'm going to stay high until Steve gets done with the free position. Very good. Yeah, that looks much better. <laughs> and we're seeing motion now. Okay. Good motion. We can actually stop motion. Ramping out. ECA complete. ECA complete. Okay. Here you go, Al. You're going to move into position then. And uh, brakes are coming on, Steve. Okay. Thanks, Mike. And uh, you are go for AGB install. Go for AGB install. And copy TCA complete. And Al, you're moving down in there. The first thing we'll be doing to uncover the um, MLI flaps on the AGB. Okay. MLI flap open on the... On the FHRC. FHRC. What? Clear so you can get yours engaged over there. They were in. Huh? They were in? They were in. Oh, sorry. This was on Artie. It was pinned against the inside of the other hand there. Steve Bowen and Al Drew getting a good view of the uh, Caribbean Ocean there and heading out uh, toward the Atlantic as the station and the shuttle travel 220 miles above the Earth. There's a good shot of Steve Bowen there in the center of the camera. He's the one that has the red stripes on his pants. Al Drew there to the left. He's in the all-white suit. Uh, beautiful. You can now retrieve your RET and adjustable tether and stow those on your mini workstation and BRT. Okay. If you're ready, I'm ready to proceed to the back out position. I am ready. Okay, Mike. I'm ready to proceed to the back out position. Okay, copy that. We're going to start out station forward and uh, look at the separation. 
And here comes the motion. And Houston Discovery, EDA. Go ahead, Nicole. Yep, uh, Steve has the flap closed. It looks like everything that's important is covered up. We copy and concur. Okay, and I'm good to go along the native face here. And let me just check and make sure everything's configured for you to be able to okay. do that all the way. Houston Discovery, EVA. And uh, go ahead, Nicole. Yeah, I just want to make sure everything's configured so that Al can just translate out all the way and native route. And uh, that's confirmed now. All inhibits are in place, and Al is uh, clear to go. This space station camera view shows us... Uh, ELC-4, newly installed on the uh, nadir side of the uh, starboard truss, and the uh, space station's robotic arm, which has moved out of the way. Just in the upper edge of the frame, you can see uh, the spacewalkers translating out to near that ELC-4. That's where they'll be installing a uh, wedge on a camera platform in order to tilt that uh, Tamar stanchion away from the uh, new spare parts platform to provide clearance for parts to be stored on it. Not rotating. So. Yeah, you're going to want it in that, I'm sure you know, in that 90 degree. Yeah, no, I yeah, can see. Yeah, I can see it in your WVS, too. I think it's unlocked. I can yeah. It doesn't want to go that way. Right, you might be there now, too. Yeah, it feels like it's, it's following me out. All right, good job, you guys. Do you feel any springiness on there? Don't worry, I'm going to get some of that phone out. Can't get it. Is that coming? I mean, no. Huh? No, I need to find a couple more turns. Okay, I'll give you a couple more turns in. It's Al Drew who has his uh, back to this uh, camera, Steve Bowen on the other side, and you can see the camera stanchion uh, sticking out between the two of them. They've already removed the stanchion from the truss that installed the camera wedge, and Al Drew is now driving the bolt to reinstall the stanchion on top of that wedge. I see him from the saws when we showed up. Yeah. And from Houston, good numbers. That? I don't see any jack. Okay, it looks like it's on there. If you need the new book coming out of here, make sure our tethers are all I totally agree. Yeah, me too. I'm taking my red off as a stanchion. I think you got it on there pretty good. All right, you guys, I know uh, um, there's more important things to do, but we want to take a picture of you. Okay. View now coming from the uh, International Space Station, from the camera out on the uh, starboard side of the truss, uh, showing that the camera that's just was uh, had a wedge installed to uh, cant the uh, camera stanchion away from the new uh, the new stowage platform is uh, send is uh, sending pictures and as we can see here is uh, still panning and tilting as it should. 
for the next task on the spacewalk, which is known as the uh, CETA rail stub installation. Both Bowen and Drew are translating onto the S3 truss out to uh, where the S3 intersects with the S4 truss and the solar alpha rotary joint. They're going to be installing short extensions on both of the rails on the S3 side of that interface, which will allow the mobile transporter, which can carry the uh, mobile base system and it carrying the arm, can be extended out to uh, the fullest extent on uh, that side of the truss, which will accommodate additional, uh, will expand the uh, envelope area of work that can be done by those uh, tools out on that side of the station. Yeah, that's in the bottom. And stand by now. Uh, Houston, if you agree, we're going to um, let uh, Steve finish up the whip extender task and then head back to the airlock, and then we'll be ready for. You're not going to say, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Message in a bottle. Okay, we'll be working message in a bottle next. Uh, we got sunshine, so it'll be good. Outstanding. And we were listening to uh, the accompaniment from the space station, the crew playing the song from the police, Message in a Bottle. That'll be the final task for the spacewalk today, as Steve Bowen and Al Drew take part in a, an activity sponsored by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. They will uh, retrieve a metal cylinder from the uh, airlock. They'll open it to fill that cylinder with uh, the vacuum of space and then uh, bring it back home where it will be uh, returned to the ground for public display. That's Steve Bowen in the center of this uh, camera view to get himself stabilized with the camera to uh, get close-up pictures of uh, Al Drew on the right as he performs the message in a bottle activity. And now from Al Drew's helmet camera, you can see in the lower right-hand corner, uh, his right hand is holding the bottle. Houston for Thank EBA. Thank you. Go ahead. And uh, to the whole team there, great work completing a textbook EBA. And Al, uh, congratulations for a stellar job on your first spacewalk. Good job, dude. Thanks, Tim. Couldn't have done it without you, dude. guys, uh, welcome back in. Stellar job, the Alvin. Welcome to the club of those who work in a vacuum. And uh, we're going to start by verifying some of the stuff we've already done for both check SCU and DCM. Hi, Scott. Uh, we've just wanted to let you know that uh, for the mission plan, your plus one dock stay is approved. Uh, the focus of that will be PNM outfitting. We are still awaiting a formal decision on the fly around. We expect that to come out of the Flight Day 6 Mission Management Team meeting. 
copy, and we're going to set up an overview timeline for the extension day uh, later today.